say, well, I want to go to America, even though I have this visa to Israel. Mm -hmm. The American consulate gave me permission to enter the United States. In fact, when at the moment I was doing it, I was a person without any documents. Mm. Really? The American consulate in Vienna and Rome helped me to enter the United States as a legal immigrant. But prior to uh, my applying for the American consulate, I was basically totally illegal without any documents. Soviet Union stripped me of any documents. So, um, yes, I came here as a legal resident, but I still have a feelings for those who would leave their country to come to America and live the life that they're really thinking as of dream and the education is definitely part of it. So if they want to go and educate themselves, I'd like to help. And on the top of it, I like to say that, I don't know if you watched the movie 42? I don't know. Oh, that's, that's the Jackie, Jackie, Robinson. Jackie Robinson, Robinson movie. It's All right, good. Movie. Yeah, well, I know about it. Yeah. Jackie Robinson had the number 42 on his uniform. Yeah, I, I just, I don't think it's, <clears throat> it's uh, really about uh, an African-American man entering the field. I think it's about leveling the field for everybody mm -hmm. and making a baseball as a game, a better game okay. because sure. of the new players. Mm -hmm. right. And there is a parallel to it and what's happening here with the immigration process, I believe. All right, good. Good uh, answer. I wanted to uh, ask you about the committees. I mean, have you changed, has any of your committees changed under Carl no, Hastings? I'm still, uh, I'm not the same committee Because you're on aging and mm -hmm. cities, election law, government employees, housing, social services. You're on the subcommittee on Mitchell Lama, which is a housing program, mm -hmm. the subcommittee on outreach and oversight of senior citizen programs. Mm -hmm. so, and that fits in because you have a lot of seniors Absolutely. in your district. It's the, so. All those committees are so relevant to my district. Right. I just, I wouldn't want to change it. Well, I don't know how election law is relevant, specific to your... Well, election laws, I have to tell to you that for years, I've been fighting the Board of Elections for uh, the ability of Board of Elections to translate all the documents in Russian. Still, and I'm still fighting, oh, even though there that? is a law, yeah. but Board of Elections still would not be the law. Really? They don't? Yeah. I and thought they had like I 40 languages that they Some people translate. are saying these days maybe they're doing it because it's a language which Putin's speaking with. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So that's something. So election law was, is still is relative to everything that I'm doing, especially um, to the uh, first so to speak, years of my career. Yeah. Uh, it was a year when I was trying to, I've been trying to energize the Russian Jewish community and, 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 and bring people to the voting booth and, and make them uh, equal members of the society sure. who would be able to vote. You think they're reluctant because they never knew how to vote in Russia? It's like so new to them? Uh, yes, well, in Russia, in fact, many of them, especially seniors, they've been voting in Russia because in Russia, you, you, it was a mandate. You just you had, go, you had to go and vote. In fact, you had There's to go and vote. There's only on one the candidate on the for one candidate. Yeah, it's it's a nonsense. It's a nonsense. But we all knew it's a nonsense that we have to obey. You know. So, but uh, no, no, they they've been voting. But but again, voting there and voting here are two different things. You for have sure. to educate yourself about different candidates. You have to know what you're doing in the booth. And, and at the beginning, it was very important to have it in Russia. Now it's, well, More I hope people. Board of Elections wouldn't, wouldn't <laughs> watch this program. Maybe it's not as important as it was 10 years ago. Because more and more younger people know the English. Yes, so. Yeah, and even the older people, they already know how, even how to use the electronic machine. Uh -huh. so, so it's, um, well, the law is the law, Board of Elections, let's yeah. do it, but it's it's a bit less relevant. Well, I'll yeah. talk to Todd Valentine. Yes, you know, yeah. and I know him. Um, I wanted to ask you. There was something uh, that the speaker put out a news release about growing anti-Semitism in Argentina. So since we're talking about the world stage in different countries, I was just wondering. Uh, he wants to 
have a probe. Uh, he wants, you know, call for an investigation into this. I mean, w why does the uh, the state assembly, you know, get involved with anti-Semitism in Argentina? Well, again, I think that uh, we have uh, we have many people in the assembly who would um, who would be tracing their roots, except maybe myself, who would experience it himself. But you have you have many people in the assembly who trace their roots back to Eastern Europe and the pogroms, anti-Semitism. Yeah. Right. They're very worried now with what's happening in Europe, and now it's happening in Argentina too. So it's I, I believe it's very relevant to what we're doing in the assembly. And I we think don't have Argentinians in this. Uh, too many Argentinians in the state. I ask Neely was she will tell you. Who will? Neely. Nilly, yes, she's yeah. one of the people who was listed. Her parents listed. were born in Argentina. Oh, that's why. I don't know listed. if that if they, if that's the reason, oh, but oh, okay, because I just know of her as being born in, in Israel, in Jerusalem. It's New York State, related to that, any part of the world, Mark. <laughs> yes, but I didn't know that her parents were from Argentina. For example, tomorrow I'm having a big delegation coming from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Why are they coming here? So why to see again? Him. Well, the he people, draws yeah. them like a magnet yeah. all around the world. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the uh, well, they, in fact, today they in Washington and Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania State Assembly, I think, right. is approving some resolution today. Well, uh, what I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to give uh, people a chance to, to get more attention, especially when you have a country which is our friend in fighting terrorism. They providing us with the uh, airports and even put some boots on the ground in Afghanistan. I don't know how many, right. 10, 20 people, but you know, it, it's been right. done by Azerbaijan. So friends are coming, let's give them some attention, let's give them some respect. I think it's a good thing, especially in today's world where people are experiencing so many, so many different negative things. Mm -hmm. Azerbaijan, by the way, Azerbaijan has an impeccable relationship with Israel. Really? Well, I'm, I'm glad you told me so that when I go to the capital and I <laughs> see these Azerbaijanis, I won't think we're being invaded by <laughs> Russia. <you know? laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but it seems like, you know, we have a Turkey, Turkish Cultural Day, mm -hmm. we have a Canadian Day, we have a Italian-American, Irish-American mm -hmm. Days, and now we're going to have an Azerbaijan Day. With the help of Turkish Cultural Center, because really? Turkey and Is Azerbaijan they speak the is, same language. Did they spur this on? Did they yeah. help? Yeah, okay. Yes, absolutely. Usul, is that his name? Usul? Um, the head Vessel, of Vessel, Vessel and yeah. Suleiman and a couple right. other people. Okay. Uh, Suleiman is, a, is an, a, a great example of a Muslim who's helping right. uh, a Jewish rabbi right. to save some cemeteries in Turkey. I don't know if you oh, know no, about I it. Oh, no, I didn't know about that. Yeah. Okay. So it's... It's, hard it's time to bring yeah. good people right. together. No, that's know? very good. So what? So I'll okay. I'll talk to you later about it. Tell me what's going on with the aging committee that you know you might want people to know. I mean, because uh, these all these committees. I mean, you are on so many committees. There are people like Dove Hyken who are, aren't on any committees. You know, and you just go from one to the other to the other. But they don't meet every week. These committees. Well, they, um, you know, now you have. Um, you have a budget discussion, right. so people are busy, uh, busy with that. No, no, mostly. but I'm just but saying in general. I mean, the, the, when there's a bill that has to come up, sometimes they, you know, it's just one, one or two bills because they're leaving it for the. Oh, you got to go to Peter Abadi Governmental Employees Committee, for example. Yeah. We're going to have 50 bills tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or aging committee. In fact, Steven Simberwitz is now chair of the committee. Sometimes we have a good number of bills. Of which committee? committee? The aging? Aging. You were talking he's, about aging. Yeah, he's, and he's, he's your a neighbor. chair now. Yeah. He's your neighbor, uh, legislative district. And a friend. Yeah, and yeah. And a friend, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so, so what are we seeing in the aging committee that... Should... Well, it's, uh, it's a, lot of, a lot of bills supporting... <coughs> excuse me. Supporting uh, senior citizens one way or another. Of course. There are, for example, yeah. uh, bills that would provide them with some tax credits, if they participating, if they're volunteering in non-for-profits. Non they usually pass the assembly, wouldn't pass the Senate, 
<laughs> one but house bills, yeah. One house bills, but it's a, it's a good bills, you know, it's giving people... So what are you sponsoring, what are you pushing in the legislature these, this year? Well, I have, um, uh, you see, in my case, it's, it's interesting because um, uh, people, some people would have a perception that I'm representing Russian Jewish community. Well, <laughs> yes. Um, I fair, am, but <laughs> fair perception. Yeah. But I have um, well, I have only fifteen percent Russian Americans in my district. Right, I have but thirty percent African. It is, it is. Yeah. It's a fair perception. But what I'm trying to say, for example, I'm supporting a bill for the military spouses. Uh, and uh, that bill would allow them to, um, in case of uh, military family moving to a new place of residency, that would allow them uh, to get an unemployment benefits, mm -hmm. even though they have to voluntarily leave their leave they work in, in case of a relocation. Why I'm doing it? Because I have Fort Hamilton in my district. The only military installation in New York City happened to be in a former Soviet <laughs> yes, Soviet-born, I should say. But it's a assemblyman. Uh, and, so and, it's and it's what in the northern part of your district or the western part of your district? Uh, it's by the Verrazano Bridge. Yeah, it's, I know. Uh, I, know. I personally part, know where Fort Hamilton western is. Western part of just, the district. It's yeah. just uh, and and it's an honor for me. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of of sponsoring mm -hmm. bills like like this one. Okay. That. It's helping military personnel. When do you think uh, you'll be chairing a committee? Uh, because you're one of the younger members. How many years have probably, you been in there? Well, how nine many years. years. Oh, this? I'm almost there. Uh, <laughs> well, another year, you know, nine years. So when you're there 10 years, you're part of the pilots club. Most likely. You know? Yeah, so most, li most likely it's a time to get a committee. So we, okay. we, we're, so, getting, we're getting there. So if you had a there. chance to chair a committee and you're Brother, you know, you had your brothers besides ways and means and education, which are uh, <laughs> well, health, you know, there are committees uh, which you, you will have to wait twenty yeah. years. For. Well, that's like I said, health and education and ways and means and, so. and housing, yeah. most likely. So, uh, well, you know, something that's happening in the cities would be an interesting thing to do. Also, governmental employees. Yes. I love Peter Abadi. I'm, I'm going to give him 220. Okay. But this is something that if, if Peter would become president of the United States... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd like his committee, yeah. Well, almost, yeah, probably. Probably, okay. yes. I'm, I'm, I know very well people in, uh, in, in those unions, fire department mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, ambulances and, uh, and police departments. I'm very close with them. I'm, in fact, one of my bills is the capital punishment for the uh, cop killers. Think it's it'll a get hard, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's a long shot. It's mm -hmm. a long shot, but, mm -hmm. but I'm proud that I'm the, I'm the main sponsor of this bill. Um, it has to be there. Even though it's a long shot, I believe that our police officers, they just deserve it. They deserve it. They putting their life online for us every day, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, especially now when we have a, a situation where they are not totally appreciated by the society and by some of my colleagues. I'm very proud of this bill. No, it sounds like a, a good bill. I mean, I am not a fan of the death penalty, but certainly. If it's going to be for cop, yeah, yeah, for anyone, it would yeah, be yeah, a I'm cop killer. I'm not supporting death mm -hmm. penalty in right. general, but in a situation which we were eyewitness, eyewitnessing, well, on the TV, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, tragically, a couple times, it's a very clear situation where a person just, I wouldn't even call him human being, just approach police officers and, and, yeah. and, and kill them. Right. Well, that's like what happened in the car, in the police car with yes. uh, tr yeah. uh, Lou and I forgot the two people, the two yes, cops' names. Yeah. But I, I, I believe that uh, um, a person like this deserves to be punished let, let to the capital add, punishment. Let, since we're talking sort of foreign, uh, foreign countries, and you know, uh, there's an issue in New York City about circumcisions mm -hmm. and the mitzvah bepeh, where you. Uh, actually, have draw, a draw, draw, draw blood, an oral, you know, oral suction, and, mm -hmm. 
Do you, what, what do you think of that? And is there a compromise? There's a compromise that the mayor came to with the religious leaders in New York City. Um, you know, in t in terms of, do you know about the compromise or? I don't know about the compromise. So okay, it's that the if you more of a city than well, the state, really. Right, but he, but that's why I'm saying he's from Brooklyn, and mm -hmm. and they do this in his his no, district, so mm -hmm. that's why. Didn't come up to the state law. That's what I'm saying. N yeah, yeah, right. but no, no, you know, I just thought maybe you might know. Uh, you know, when they the, the compromise is that it would be sort of self policing. Mm -hmm. So if there is a uh, if the baby has a uh, Kirby. It comes in, it has an illness, uh, herpes or something, you know, from this uh, procedure, then they uh, get a DNA test, then the moil gets a DNA test, and if it matches with the baby, mm -hmm. then the moil is prohibited from ever doing uh, this type of uh, procedure again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a matter of... Sounds right. You know, that's... Sounds then, like a common sense. And that's what they're doing in Rockland County, so... Uh, well, they're doing that in New York City now. Now New York now City, just right. Signed mm -hmm. it. That sounds like a common sense. Okay. You know, it just... Because um, there are some people who are just totally against the mitzvah pay, and they don't want to uh, have, you know, they don't... How can they? Huh? How can they be against it? Well, they're not against the bris. They're just against the... That, so, uh, that but, procedure. But the, but the procedure, it's... Uh, I would rather say that it's a religious procedure. So we have a separation of state and religion. Yeah. But it's the health of the baby also, which brings yeah. it back to a governmental... So there is a compromise. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, like, I, like, I like compromises. I think that compromises very often representing common sense. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you see as some of the big issues coming up for the... Uh, in this legislative session? What do you see as rising to the top? You know, you've been to conference enough mm -hmm. now, this this session where, you, you know, they're talking uh, as about... As always, it, it's education yeah. and uh, all the uh, education questions and uh, and testing and, and all this stuff like that. And, uh, and of course, the, uh, the gap for the charters. Um, uh, it's, again, it's, it's all the new ethics reforms and uh, public financing. Um, Any environmental issues that are hot? Well, I think we're kind of over fracking for now. We're over, right, because the governor has the ban on it. Other than that, nothing that I would, that would okay. come to my mind right away. You know, it's uh, kind of a slow session. Well, it seems like a sleepy session. Let's just, let's see what's going to happen. Aside from the, <laughs> uh, the leadership, it seems like a slow Well, the budget's season. always a big issue. Don't, it's yeah, it seems like it's, I mean, 95% of the budget that the governor proposes, the legislature disposes on. They basically uh, tinker around the edges with the last, you know, 2 3% of the budget. You know. Margaret, but those 2 3%, I mean, you have to have to fight for it. And, and, right. it's, uh, and, it, takes, and it takes time and efforts to fight for those two, three percent. And sometimes those two, three percent, especially for the education, are just extremely important. Well, when, when you talk about the ethics reforms, do you think the governor should be included and the executive branch be included with the same time, the, the same way the legislature is? Of course. Well, yes. the governor said that he shouldn't be because... It just, again, it's a common sense. Because the legislature's part-time, the governor's not a part-time job, and the part-time issue is what uh, leads to the impropriety. But what's the difference? People, when they have a full-time job, they're making mistakes, serious mistakes. When they have a part-time job, they can make a mistake. I like to, uh, if there is a disclosure, full disclosure, and I'm totally for it, I like to see it on both, uh, in both parts of the government. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Very good. Listen, as we're out of time, thank you for coming back. <laughs> and and uh, again, Malta, for a new thank session. You, and um, continue your good work that you're doing with good health. Yes. Thank you much very success. much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right.